Welcome to Ham on WTBR, the all-inclusive ham radio show for hams and non-hams alike. Be part of the show. Contact us on www.facebook.com slash hamjamtv. And now the hosts of the show, Peter and Jessica. Ham on. And good morning. Morning, everybody. How are you? Welcome to Ham on WTBR. Oh, yes. Middle of October already. Do you believe <laughs> it's that? hard to believe. Almost, almost ready for Christmas and Walmart and everything else. Don't it's hurry Christmas. Don't hurry Christmas. I want my, I want my spooky stuff. I want my Halloween. It's Don't got hurry their, it. their stuff up already. The oh, topic I can't of our it. show today will be. What will, will be? be? What will we decide? Huh. Traffic handling and amateur radio, hmm. and we're going to have a call-in guest. Ooh. We hope um, in. James N One PZP will, will be uh, will be on the phone with us. Hopefully, if all hopefully. goes right. Uh, so uh, hopefully, right now, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> right now, let's uh, go to the news. Jesse, you're up. Well, of uh, course, AARL is having their Jamboree on the air registration already. Um, within a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks going before the Scout Jamboree on the air event, that is October 18th and the 20th, if anybody wants to join in, there you go. Um, Jamboree on the air coordinator Jim Wilson, K5ND, reports that nearly 200 U.S. stations have already registered their interactions to, uh, their intentions to participate interactions. Yeah. Wow, I can't read. <laughs> their intentions to participate. Over the last years, we had typically around 300 stations registered before the weekend. Uh, um, Wilson told ARL, so we're on track. Wilson noted that ICOM America is providing an ID fi- ID dash five one A plus two uh, VHF US UHF D Star portable to encourage stations to submit after uh, after event reports. A drawing will be sele- a drawing will select the recipient of the radio. So they're having a drawing if you guys want to participate it sounds nice hmm I wonder uh, what kind of radio is that that they're drawing for uh, what was that again I missed it uh, they're going to be um, I- ICOM. ICOM ICOM is uh, providing is going to have a ID dash 51a plus UHF uh, and VHF D star portable so handheld yeah, it's it's a, a handheld uh, HT that's capable of D Star, which oh, means wow. which mean well you know like my DMR radio. Oh, uh, the, oh, the little tiny handheld one. Yeah, my you know my DMR radio at home. This is going to be D Star. Oh, so I'm sorry. You have a lot of handhelds at home, so um, I'm trying to think. Ow. Is that the one that you have to pro? Is that I'm um, not ham talking here. Is that the one that you have to program? Um, yeah, that's the one I have programmed oh, up to the hotspot. And what, D-Star is what? Something D-Star is... Something you need to register for, right? Well, you need to register for D- DMR, too, but D-Star is another portable or, uh, uh, d- um... Dumb, 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 Digital dumb. mode. It's another, d- it's another <laughs> digital mode, D-Star and Fusion, um, which the K1FFK repeater has, and oh, DMR, okay. but if you have a hotspot, most of the new hotspots... <laughs> Can run all three of them. Um, oh, D Star run runs um, all three modes. Yeah, D Star run D Star runs all all three modes. Yeah, it's what D is what D Star Fusion and I forget what the other one is that you told me. There's D Star Fusion and DMR. DMR, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Don't mind me. We just discussed that. Leave me alone. Moving on. Let, leave me alone here. Not him having a having a brain fart. Um, 
Band conditions are, uh, aren't expected to be any better than they have been for the past year. But uh, the enthusiasm will be there, Wilson predicts. And local uh, VHF, US and UHF can work as well as the D-Star and uh, voice over IP modes. Uh, U.S. participants who have not registered can do can uh, do so online. So um, people that want to register for the uh, Jamboree on the Air, uh, please do so. What exactly is Jamboree on the Air for people that don't know? Um, the Boy Scouts put out this Jamboree on the Air where they get the Boy Scouts to work the usually it's a it's a Boy Scout club station. Mm -hmm. And it gets the kids interested in ham radio, kind of like oh. what we what we try to do here. But um, it um, it uh, teaches them. It gets them on the air. Lets them make <coughs> contacts Sorry. through through the club station. And then, oh, okay. Yeah. It, it it's kind of, it's kind of to get the scouts interested. And it, I mean, it it'd be good. It can teach them preparation. I mean, um, ham radio is good for, like, disaster issue, for, like, um, disaster issues and stuff like that, you know? So, why not get them interested? Um, back to you, if you have anything. Uh, I do actually have something. I, don't know. <laughs> I can't get... I'm trying to get the... the, the the program here to go on the <laughs> cameras and it's not oh my goodness we're, we're, we're kind of stuck on are you. we are we having issues uh yeah we're kind of we're, we're kind of oh stuck on my you so we're no, no 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 don't get it stuck on me i'll I, ruin people's tv don't do that no we're just gonna kind of don't, don't do that we're, don't we're do just gonna kind of leave it where it is and we only have one camera to work with apparently today uh, <laughs> <laughs> because i got preview up i can't get the uh, all right anyway uh, we, we got a lot of feedback when we were doing the actual history of amateur radio. Um, the couple that we did, I know we did a couple weeks ago, yeah, we did about the 1912, yeah. um, the, uh, the radioactive 1912, and then last yeah, week we it, did it World was, War One. Yeah, it was impressive. It's also good for history buffs. Yeah, we were getting a little feedback from that, so, <coughs> di so this week, um, we're going to go on to... Two. 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 World, uh, 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 ham radio history, World War Two. since we know what oh, happened cool. at World War One, let's talk yeah. about World War Two. It's widely believed that amateur radio went off the air. Some believe. <laughs> Some believe. It's widely believed that amateur radio went off the air for the duration of World War Two. That was certainly the case in the United States and Canada, as well as most of the warring countries. Some neutral countries remained on the air. For example, <coughs> Portuguese hams remained on the air as much as, uh, and much of South America was still engaging in amateur radio as usual. But strangely enough, the majority exception was Nazi Germany. Germany stations were ordered off the air after commencement of hostilities in September 1939, but soon thereafter, many stations were granted a special wartime license known as, I'm not going to get this right, but we're going <laughs> to try it, Craig Funk Jin Him Gun. QS <laughs> QST, uh, which is the amateur radio magazine that... Um, Everybody gets when you sign up to be on to be part of the ARRL. Uh, the QST for April 1940 <coughs> carried the following announcement sent from Chris Schmelzer, DB4BIU, Delta 4, Delta 4 Bravo India uniform. There seems to be a widespread mi misconce misconception. Uh, concerning the German activities of German amateur stations today, according to a statement made by our government, all sport activities, etc., will be continued during the war to, uh, to as large an extent as possible. Due to this, amateur stations D4ACF, D4ADF, D4BIU, 
D4BUF, D4RGF, D4TRV, <laughs> D4WYF, D4HCF, oh, and, <laughs> and D4DKN have been relicensed recently. Oh my goodness. More licenses will follow shortly. The stations are supposed to carry on strictly in the usual manner. Um, they speculate there's two reasons, both of which seem plausible. The first was to show the world a sense of normalcy. Apparently, the idea was for those in the rest of the world to have the impression that life was going on normally. Or, as the QST article above put it, all sport activities, etc., will be continued during the war <coughs> to, a, to as large an extent as possible. The other reason was more practical. It was believed that hams and SWLs, that's shortwave listeners, shortwave. people that yeah. don't have their ham license but want to listen to us and listen to the, uh, the big AM broadcast stations, um, it was believed that hams and SWLs could provide valuable propagation information. Indeed, one source noted that both hams and SWLs were required to keep duplicate logs and send one copy to the authorities for analysis. Even more surprising, even even more surprising. Even, even more even more surprising is that there were a handful of QSOs during the war between these German stations and British stations. Oh, In 1944, really? the British government allowed a small number of hand-selected prominent hams back on the air under this program called Plan Flypaper. The call signs G7FA through G7FJ were assigned and allowed to operate with 50 watts on 80, 40, 20, and 10 meters. They were forbidden from calling. I'm just. They were forbidden <coughs> from calling German stations, but they were instructed to make the contact if a German station called them. The purpose of this program was apparently twofold. First of all. The idea was to simply make themselves available in case any interesting information was received. They had instructions if any, if any enemy station wished to send a message to relay it to headquarters and to inform the other station to contact them again the next day for any response. The other idea was that if any Allied prisoners of war gained access to a transmitter, they would be able to make contact with one of these British stations, apparently neither of these goals was realized. During the German occupation of Poland, during the German occupation of Poland, Maximilian Kolb, okay, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to send you over and let you do, uh, let you do something here. And I'll get back to this in just a moment. Um, uh, let me see. Pittsfield is having their, um, their events. Uh, P uh, Pittsfield Jazz Fest with uh, Veronica Swift and S and Stephanie <coughs> Nackerson. It will be held on October nineteenth at seven thirty through seven thirty through nine thirty p.m. The Keystone event is the fifteenth annual Pittsfield City Jazz Fest, featuring a rare pairing of legendary vocalist Stephanie Nackerson, a Berkshire favorite. And her daughter Veronica and her daughter Veronica Swift, the fast raising, rising uh, vocalist on the jazz scene today. So, if you want to go see this mother and daughter pair, please go. Um, please go ahead and um, go to the Colonial Theater, and also on top of that, check out the Colonial Theater at BerkshireJazz.org for more information. If you want Hello. to go ahead and go there. Um, downtown Pittsfield is going to be having their trick or treat. Um, Pittsfield Incorporated and local Pittsfield and uh, local downtown business owners have partnered up again for this year's downtown trick or treat. Um, <coughs> the 2019 festivities will be held Thursday, October the 17th, from 5 to 7 p.m. From 5 to 7 p.m. Families are encouraged to visit the downtown business, the downtown businesses, and their best Halloween costumes to score free downtown treats. 
Um, <coughs> look for the little orange. Look for the little orange pumpkin. Made orange pumpkin in the window. Participating of uh, participating businesses. And of course, don't forget to uh, take pictures of your little of your little uh, kids having fun using the hashtag hashtag downtown trees and hashtag heart and heart of the Berkshires. And just a reminder, the kids must be accompanied by an adult. Uh, I can't have kids roaming around without adults now. And um, thank you so much for the um, event. Hmm? Uh, you're listening to Ham on on WTBR. WTBR. Impressive. Almost impressive. What do we need to do? I can't take it anymore. I need to get away. There's too much to handle. Being a teenager is tough. Family, teachers, friends, life. The stress can be overwhelming. It's only natural to want to escape. Things are so hard right now. I have to get out of here. Sometimes running away seems like the only choice, but it can be dangerous and definitely not what you expected. National Runaway Switchboard is here to help. Call 1-800-RUNAWAY. Running away is nothing like I imagined. I don't know what to do. Whether you've recently run away, thinking about it, oh. or are a concerned uh, parent or guardian, call 1-800-RUNAWAY. <laughs> National Runaway Switchboard is free. Confidential. Available 24 hours a day. Offering James, supporting James, can you hear me? To get you through Hello? this tough James. time. One eight hundred yeah. runaway. All right, I got gotcha. you. Hang on. Thanks. Okay. One eight hundred runaway. Can you go to the website? Do you mind the footer? And just have the website available. All right, you still there? Yes, I am. All right, we'll have you on right after the break. You must be your fairy godmother. <laughs> yes. It doesn't take a fairy godmother to tell you that the right fit means everything. Good heavens, child. You can't go in back. Children under four foot nine need to be in a booster seat because they aren't ready for adult safety belts alone. Remember that four foot nine is the magic number. And get your little pumpkin there safely in a booster seat. Oh, thank you. For more information, visit boosterseat.gov. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. I, for one, dream of an America where everybody knows that the bird is the word. My God, is it possible? Have the boys in the lab confirm this. Okay, and we're back on WTBR. Welcome and back, on the phone, we have our guest. This is Pam on on WTBR, and we are doing a topic of uh, traffic handling. And on the phone, and let's see if I got this right, is James Gershwinger, November 1 Papa Zulu <laughs> Papa, who is uh, calling us from, I guess, Loudoun, New Hampshire. James, welcome to WTBR in Pittsfield. Welcome, welcome. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? And you did okay, but it's Gershwinger. You're definitely 100% German. 100% German. <laughs> well, to, to be honest, we've only really, you know, talked on, on the repeater, on the heavy hitters net, and, not, and, and, and in Facebook Messenger. So it's going to be a thing. So thanks for being here. Thanks for calling in. Um, let's see. Let's start with, well, why don't you uh, tell the uh, listeners a little bit about yourself? Okay. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me as a guest. It's an absolute <laughs> honor. And anytime I can talk ham radio with someone is, is certainly a pleasure. Um I started out at eight years old, uh, driving my uncle crazy, and he was an amateur radio operator, still is actually, and uh, my mother told him to take me away for a few hours and entertain me, so he figured <laughs> the best thing to do would be to turn his amateur radio on, and within about 10, 15 minutes, we were talking to somebody in Japan from the state of New Hampshire, and I was forever hooked, and uh, I made it a point to learn Morse code backwards, forwards, inside and out. But um, unfortunately, I couldn't pass the written test. And eight years old became 12 years old. And 12 years old, I decided I wanted to do teenage boy things instead of amateur radio. And then unfortunately, when I decided to get crazy about amateur radio again, I was 18. And Morse code became a foreign language that I still to this day uh, don't comprehend. So I'm just a... 
no code tech bunk, but uh, 25 years later, I still love every minute of it and uh, have now branched out into many other things, including public safety events, uh, Aries. I'm a retired firefighter, and uh, but traffic handling is probably my number one passion for sure. So when you got your license and you figured out which way you wanted to go with this hobby, what, what brought you to traffic handling? Um, just the fact that I had, I, I got disabled five years ago and uh, knew that my amateur radio hobby was going to become my number one pass, you know, my, my number one thing in life. So I started uh, branching out besides just talking on the radio and started learning other things. And uh, I, I was always a weather nerd, so I had that pretty much uh, under control. So I branched out into traffic handling and wind link and uh, uh, passing messages all throughout the country. And in my first year of traffic handling, I easily broke my goal of 500. And then my second year of traffic handling as just a no-code tech, I broke my goal of 1,000. So uh, uh, oh, wow. pretty proud of myself for sure. So, nice. um, for, for, because this show is, is nice. not only for the hams that are inactive and the hams that are active, but we're also for non-hams. So why don't you give us a little, you know, a little taste of what exactly do we do for traffic handling, explain the radiograms, um, kind of put you on the spot here. <laughs> well, the fun thing about traffic handling, as you just said, is it can benefit non-hams. Um, I've taken messages from people in New Hampshire that are trying to get a message to their relative who is a ham. I've taken messages from people that aren't hams that are trying to get messages to relatives that aren't hams. Um, when all else fails, amateur radio is still there. Um, we do a great service in times of emergency as well as if cell phones go down or any of that kind of stuff. Primarily, 90% of my traffic has been from ham to ham. Uh, relaying uh, status re uh, station activity reports as well as net reports and stuff like that. But I have done a couple of uh, messages down into hurricane areas um, as well as to wish uh, amateur radio operators a happy birthday yeah. that have reached the milestone birthdays. Uh, I have a friend in Texas who um, has been a ham for 65 years and just recently he celebrated his 85th birthday and we sent them a radiogram to wish them a happy birthday and everything so it oh, has bless. very very uh very, very large uh reasons for, for radiograms uh so it's a lot of fun um and for a question for the non-ham um part of this here james um what part of ham radio interests you at the age of eight what was um the main thing that interested you in wanting to get into this? When I was eight years old, it was the fact that I that I wanted to talk to people as far away as possible. And um, I thought that I was going to specialize in DX, but uh, I'm not a good test taker. And I, I'm, in fact, I never was. Uh, somehow I made it through high school. <laughs> but uh, but uh, now with my brain trauma, it's going to be harder than ever to... Uh, to pass the test, but I uh, I missed the general by only two questions last year, so it, it's on my, oh, my wow. list of things to do. And then if I do that, the traffic handling world will really open up wide for mm -hmm. sure. So w when I met you on, on Facebook, you were taking um, radiograms from uh, all, the, all the grid zones, and, and we'll have to explain what the grid squares are. But yeah, um, for is there an you're going to need to. Is, is there an update on that? How many grid squares have you actually gotten radiograms from? I know you've gotten me from FN32, but what, uh, how many grid squares have you collected since uh, we started this? Oh, nothing like uh, putting me on the spot, huh? If I would have been prepared, I'd have, uh, I'd have an answer for you. Um, it has flown off a little bit, but uh, I am doing quite well. I've uh, ventured out into countries and, and states and everything like that. And um, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a challenge, though, especially some of the smaller grid squares and uh, smaller countries and states. But I do have some radiograms from Spain. In fact, I got one from the uh, 
uh, director of emergency communications for the whole country of Spain, which was quite an honor for sure. Yeah, wow, well, that is a real big honor. Now, now, for those who don't know, the, the non hams, um, the amateur radio world is split into grid zones. Um, and, and usually, when you give, especially if you're working the satellites, you'll have to give your call and your. your I got to do that for the first time the other day. That was fun. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, we'll, we'll let you talk about that in just a second. Uh, but you go to your grid zones, you give, you give uh, y- y- your call sign, and you give your grid zones, the, uh, the whole country, um, the is, whole world. Is that what the number is in the call sign? It's mostly your grid zone? No, no. The, the call sign is your call district, oh. which really now doesn't mean anything because oh, okay. I have a two-call Call, uh, uh, call yeah, and you live in I have a two call, and we live in New England. And Vanity which calls is, have kind of messed that up a little bit. Right, oh, which is a one okay. call. Ja- ja- James, has, <laughs> James has a one <laughs> call and one PZP. And uh, you're listening to him on, on WTBN. Everybody in Florida w- wants me to switch, by the way, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you're, listening, <laughs> you're listening to him on, on WTBR-FM. So, yeah, James, we'll, we'll cycle off that for, for the, the, uh, the, the traffic county for just a minute and tell us about working the satellites because on your technician's license, you can actually work uh, the amateur radio satellites. You can work the ISS. So, uh, oh, neat. Yeah, so James, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, unfortunately, uh, I am a disabled person, and uh, I'd give it all up to be normal again. But one of the things that has benefited greatly is the ability, the, the amount of time I have to play with different facets of amateur radio. And if anybody ever tells you that they've become bored with amateur radio, they're obviously not looking at uh, different things that are available. So I, uh, I got interested in, in, in working satellites when I was down in Florida. Uh, we go there for six months out of the year, my wife and I, and uh, got really interested in it down there and just started doing it up here, and I was able to hear somebody on the AO85 the other day, and I was actually able to listen to a, a space shuttle astronaut talk to some kids out in California on uh, October 1st, and it was like... Uh, sitting next to my wife in the living room he came in so clear so oh, just, wow. just to think that they're that far away and they're that clear on just a bayo fang with a stock antenna was was quite amazing oh nice to get to get it to be a dfq that that so is of course amazing. i'm going to send him a radiogram to, to let him know that i that i that i heard him <laughs> nothing like interweaving the facets of the hobby <laughs> oh yes um we just well, i want to do this real quick because we, we should have done this earlier our trivia question for today Hmm. And, we'll see, and, and if anybody knows this, we'll panel the group here um, later on before, before we end to see if anybody knows this. But um, if anybody out there knows it, www.facebook.com backslash TV. He's been, this is, the, this is the, the trivia question. He's been with several groups, but is probably best known as a member of the Eagles. <laughs> Who is it? I think I know. <laughs> I'm not going to answer. I've sent him a radiogram, and he hasn't responded back to me. I'm not happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, my goodness. I, I, well, I, I think everybody knows that answer. <laughs> I think everybody knows that answer. Um, so, so James, t- tell us. I know I hear you on the Heavy Hitters Traffic Net, which is coming into eastern Massachusetts, and, we, and I get on there through Echo Link, and I think as well as you do. But what other nets um, are you traffic handling for? I use yours when your Echo Link is up, and uh, I would like to commend you for, for providing that, that uh, opportunity. I also uh, listen in on the First Region Net, as well as um, the Eastern Area Net uh, on the HF frequencies. It's nice to hear your own your traffic being passed by other people and other people receiving your traffic. Uh, wait, 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 you listen in on FRN. Which I am there every Wednesday. Well, seeing that the, re- the remote I use is kind of down, but I haven't been there in a while. But and you never check in. <laughs> I can't. I'm an. H- uh, I'm not an HF person. <laughs> oh yeah. Good. Oh yeah. That, that's right. I forgot. You're only on. You're only on tech license. But but that but that tells us. You know, even on your. Tech, Don't mind him. He's having a brain fart. E- even on your tech that's license. Okay. Even on your tech license, you can traffic handling. You don't have to be a general. You don't have to be an extra. Oh, it, it's don't. not based on classes. Well, it is to a, a degree. Okay, I, I, you know, for what we do for the Echo Link and on the repeaters, like 
I don't know what repeaters he uses up there, but down here when we use K1FFK, um, you know, you can go through the local repeaters on your tech license on, on UHF, VHF. The general portion, you have to be a general to get down into FRN, to get down to EAN, which is FRN is the first region net. EAN is the eastern area net. <laughs> uh, and, and doing that. But um, what, I mean, what, uh, I can't speak. What local repeaters are, are, do you use up there to uh, pass traffic? Uh, yes. Um, the local repeater in the New Hampshire area is the 146.94 repeater, which is maintained by the Capital Area Repeater Society. We have a traffic net every evening at uh, 2100 uh, or 9 p.m. local time, whichever your mode of time, time uh, is. We meet every night, and I'm a net control operator uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Um, that is my local net. Uh, like I said, I also listen in on the HF net. Down in Florida, I check into the Eagle net, which is on the uh, NI4CE link system. Um, they love me down in Florida. Uh, can't wait to get down there. We're, we're going to stick around a little longer this year than last year, but we'll be down there uh, uh, in the beginning of December. And I have two things that if I don't mention, I'd be really uh, mad at myself. So you got to let me mention two more things. Um, but I'll wait for your your, uh, your instructions. Go ahead. Okay. One of the things that I'm very proud of is I'm a board of director for a uh, organization that specializes in traffic handling. Now, I love the ARRL, but I do also love this organization. It's called Radio Relay International, and we specialize in traffic handling. I am the statistician for that club, which means I collect all the SAR and PSHRs nationwide and worldwide actually we have members in foreign countries uh last time i looked i think we have about 400 members worldwide who uh, are all crazy about traffic handling and uh they approached me and asked me if i'd like to be a board of director which really blew me away because i'm only in my 40s and most of these guys are are much older and have been around the the uh the cw key much longer than i have so it was quite an honor uh we have so our website for Radio Relay International is radio-relay.org. We put out a quarterly newsletter called uh, the Q&I Newsletter, which is the newsletter for traffic handlers. And I have a website for that, which is qni-newsletter.net. It averages about uh, 30 pages a month of uh, ham radio information geared for traffic handlers and uh the, the bummer is i can't tell you too much about near fest because by the time this airs near fest will have already happened but uh it'll be nice to see everybody at the deerfield new hampshire fairgrounds friday th this coming friday and saturday the i think it's the 11th and 12th and we're going to have a little coffee and donuts for traffic handlers so uh hopefully uh it's a large turnout for sure. Well, so with that, I'll send it back to you, sir. Well, congratulations on your on your Big board directors. And we just Big. we have we just have one general thing to say about that. Impressive, most impressive. <laughs> you get our most impressive thing here. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, um. A any plans on getting your general license to uh, kind of move into the realm of first region net and, and the eastern area <laughs> net so I can take some of the heat off me? You must be looking over my shoulder. It's certainly <laughs> on, my, on my list of things to do. I have the general class book out in my, in my shack, and I take practice exams. And down in Florida at uh, Hamfest, there's the... Uh, about two or three of them that allow you to take the test for free. Oh, so nice. you don't even have to worry about losing the fifteen dollars if you're if you're not smart enough that day. So that it's something awesome I definitely want more than anything. My wife wants to get her ticket so that she can, you know, have another way to harass me <laughs> besides the cell phone and, and chasing me around the house. So yeah, maybe she, she's one heck of a woman, that's for sure. Maybe when she and gets... if I did mention her She'd knock me to the moon, so <laughs> well, maybe with her sitting here next to me, she's she's my number one fan for sure. Well, maybe Aww. when she gets her ticket, we'll have her on the show. 
Absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we've had, Marcia Ford was here uh, about a month ago. That woman ago. is incredible. Yep. Um, she she drove in yep. from Concord to do the show here, and she was, uh, it's it, it's One amazing. of my best friends. Yeah, it, it's an, it's amazing the people I get. I also, um, at some point, have coming in after the New Year N1LAH, um, Ralph. And I know your section, ma- and I'm trying to get your section manager up there in Vermont, New Hampshire, K1UAF. I told him I was. I told him that I was going to be a special guest, and he was quite happy for me. So, awesome. well, see, I'm going to put you on the spot again because you're live <laughs> on the air right now. Uh, WTBR, WTBR <laughs> FM. This is Ham on. We're, we're here with J, with uh, James, and he can say his last name because I'm never going to pronounce it right. Guess wonder. There you go. And we're we're talking about traffic handling. And one PZP. And one PZP. And we're here talking about traffic handling and all this other nifty stuff and I'm here. And good on QRZ, by the way, too. And yes, every, <laughs> everybody's on QRZ. www.qrz.com. But yeah, put you on the spot here. Uh, maybe you can talk John into getting a hold of me off air <laughs> because it seems like he only talks to me on the air and see if we can't get him to call in. Um, because I have, in fact, I have a couple of section managers coming in, and it'd be nice to have John coming in. I have Ray KB1LRL, who's the section manager for Massachusetts, coming in. I have John Fritzy, who's the section manager for Eastern New York, coming in. So, and I know John just got his section manager appointment. So it'd be nice to have uh, John uh, scheduled in here. After the first of the year, because I'm kind of booked, uh, to to be here to uh, talk about section managing up in in Vermont, New Hampshire. So yeah, for us that don't know, because a lot of us don't go up there. What, what what's going on up, uh, up in Vermont and New Hampshire in the world of amateur radio? Well, we also have a new uh, section traffic manager for the state of New Hampshire, uh, Alpha Bravo One Alpha Victor Bill Noyes, has uh, stepped up into that role with John becoming the section manager for the state, K1UAF. Um, I do talk to both of those gentlemen every day. Um, great traffic handlers. John has uh, been around a little bit longer than I have. Be, uh, he used to be down in Massachusetts area, and then he moved up to New Hampshire, and we kind of both started traffic handling uh, intensely at the same amount of time. Uh, John's lucky he gets to spend all year here, so he uh, was able to jump into some positions where with me only being here six months out of the year, uh, titles and stuff aren't really uh, travelable from especially 1,300 miles away. But uh, <laughs> Near Fest is this weekend, um, October 11th and 12th. It's the largest ham fest in New England besides uh, the AWRL convention. And All we're right. just uh, getting ready for the set drill in November and getting ready for, uh, well, they are. I'm not. They're getting ready for cold temperatures and that four-letter <laughs> word that you guys don't like either. <laughs> so uh, good, good stuff in New Hampshire. Do you ever? Uh, do you ever? I, I know you can't check in, but do you ever tune in to thirty-nine fifty-eight, somewhere around six thirty to the main potato net? I do listen to that once in a while. I'm great friends with uh, Steve Hansen, KB1 TCE, uh, who does an amazing uh, uh, work with traffic handling. Well, yeah, because I'm, I'm going to have um, on the show in January, N2HFO, Michael will be calling in. So um, for, for those that are not hams, and, and that includes the one sitting across from me at the table here <laughs> in, in the studio, um, we've been talking about radiograms. Um, I know what they are, and, and of course, Jesse knows what they are because she listens to me past traffic all day. Oh, yeah. But for those who don't, um, you want to give us a breakdown of what a radiogram is and what you do with it and all that and all, and the purpose of it? Sure. And my wife, again, I'll, I'll brag about her. She can actually write tra- radiograms and receive them, and she knows her uh, her niner and her uh, break and routine and everything. So she's already, she's already halfway there, you know. Awesome. Um, a radiogram is very simple. It's broken into four parts. You have your uh, your header, which is where you have your your number of your radiogram, your your uh, precedence on on uh, whether or not it's a routine message or 
a uh, an, an emergency message. You have the sender. You have the date, time, optional. Then you have the addressee who is going to receive the message. You have, of course, the message. And then you have the signature of the station sending the message and basically the end of the message. Uh, they give you 25 characters, which at first seems like a lot, but uh, us hams can talk a lot. So <laughs> before you know it, 25 <laughs> words kind of kind of goes by. But uh, the, the key things to remember about traffic handling are the ABCs, which is your accuracy, your brevity, and, uh, of course, they forget what the C is with my brain trauma, but the ABCs of traffic handling. And I've got a good one for you. They say amateur radio is a hobby, but traffic handling is a commitment. I, yeah, I, and it is, it is very much a commitment. And it was a very much a commitment. I keep bringing it up, and I keep bringing it up, and people are probably tired of me bringing it up. But Hurricane Maria, the force of 50 that went down to Puerto Rico, um, it was a very good, very good, Big commitment for them to to go down to Puerto Rico at the last minute, and with the help of the D A R R L to get the radios up and get health and welfare messages in there. Um, were you at the receiving end of, of anything from Hurricane Maria? For this hurricane, I wasn't, but I have gotten welfare messages from other hurricanes. Um, I had the uh, opportunity of a lifetime to go to Hurricane Michael but we didn't get to Florida soon enough. Uh, they had a spot all ready for me. The uh, Hernando County uh, sent a uh, trailer out to the panhandle for Hurricane Michael, and if we would have been there two weeks earlier, I would have had a two-week uh, vacation in in the panhandle. So oh, wow. sometimes I seem like I'm a dollar short or a day late, <laughs> but that would have been an opportunity for sure. All right, we're going to go to the commercial, and then we will come back and talk to James about health and welfare messages and about the, the agreements we have with the certain agencies. And maybe we'll give you the answer to the trivia question. <laughs> You're listening to Hammer on the WTBR. WTBR. Impressive. Almost impressive. Hello, this is Robin Zanner. Hello, this is Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick for Rad. Some people think it's fun to drive drunk, but that's unacceptable. Be smart. If you drink, don't drive. Think ahead and choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, oh. Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Adding fractions is nothing. For real? Look, these are denominators. You multiply this one so that it's the same as that, yeah. and you add them up. Man, that's easy. Charles Bennett dreamed of returning to the old neighborhood as a teacher. But without money for college, only half of his dream came true. He's back in the old neighborhood. Well, enough math. I got to deliver these sandwiches. Please support the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. A message from the UNCF and the Ad Council. Work can be fun, but it isn't fun if you get hurt on the job. Wear the proper safety equipment. When you're working outside, drink plenty of water, and don't be afraid to ask for help from your coworkers. Remember, your boss is responsible for your safety. Know your limits and your rights. Work hard and be safe. For more information, visit OSHA.gov or call 800-321-OSHA. A message from the U.S. Department of Labor. You think you know what radio is, but there is a radio you may not have yet discovered. Amateur radio, or as it is often called, ham radio. You can talk to the world. Hey, Yoshi, you're my first contact with Japan. Help when disasters strike. The hurricane emergency net is now open for priority traffic. Or make friends worlds away. G'day, mate. Beautiful day here out in Australia. I tell you what, the waves of... Say hello to the world via amateur radio. The ARRL, the National Organization for Amateur Radio, can teach you how. Visit helloradio.org and say hello to ham radio. Don't be too proud of this technological terror you've constructed. Here we go again. Here we go again. Excellent! I demand more! 89.7 WTBR FL. Pittsfield. And we are back on the air. And we are back with James N1 PZP. Um, and we were Welcome talking. Welcome back, everybody. We were. We were. 
We were we talking are. about traffic handling yeah. and, other, and, and other things. Um, <laughs> and other things. <laughs> and other things. Uh, uh, James, uh, hopefully, James, you're still with us. I am. You are. Uh, Hold on. That, that's good that you're with us. All right, we have, um, we were talking earlier about health and welfare messages. Um, would you like to explain to our listeners what those health and what health and welfare messages are as they relate to what we do as traffic handlers in amateur radio? Well, I'll let you do that. Um, but you did touch on <laughs> third party traffic and there are plenty of, uh, international stations that, that you can pass traffic with, um, <coughs> and everywhere from Antigua, Argentina, Australia, uh, Brazil, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, Guatemala, Haiti, Honduras, all over the place, as well as Panama, St. Kitts and St. Lucia, South Africa, Trinidad and Tobago, and many, many others, uh, which is a lot of fun sending messages to foreign countries. Wow. Yeah, and, and the rules state that we can only send messages to the countries that we have third-party agreements with. So there's some places that we can't talk to that oh, we really? won't mention. But yeah, th we have to have a third-party agreement. And I guess I'm on the spot as Assistant Section Traffic Manager for Western <laughs> Massachusetts. Thank you, by the way. Um, the health and welfare messages. Yeah, uh, 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 pretty much, we, we work with organizations. Um, we have ongoing... Um, um, things with organizations, commitments with organizations, uh, with the Salvation Army, the American Red Cross, to name a couple. Um, and w and what will happen is if we're in a disaster like in Hurricane Maria, not only were we down there, the Red Cross was down there, the Salvation Army was down there, um, mm -hmm. the Hurricane Watch Net, the, the Hurricane um, that went on, and, and Saturn was there, which is the amateur radio service for the uh, Salvation Army. Uh. Um, the routine traffic that James talks about is, is is one thing where you can just write up a message, you know, <coughs> excuse me, hi, how are you? Um, nice, ni nice to hear you on the air. Send me a QSL card. Does uh, I think that sound familiar, James? Yeah, <laughs> that was one of the <laughs> messages that I actually got through. And, and, and then there's the health and welfare messages, which. What came out of Hurricane Maria, which is high, you know, we're okay. Um, Everybody's okay. We're, we're in alive. place. We're, we're, we're fine. We're doing good. Those messages take all priority over everything uh, so that's, uh, as so far that's as what goes through the system. So if somebody comes up and says, hey, can you send a, can you send a happy birthday message? And then somebody comes up and says, we got to get this emergency message to somebody. And it doesn't even have to be through... Salvation Army or or through a disaster it could be um, you know somebody's family member went SK and, and we've talked about wh what SK is silent key okay. and they have to get message to them quick there are precedences for that and if you go to the EMA dot a r r l web page they have a whole whole list of them yes did you have a question uh, I think you already answered it. Um, the question was, uh, the question was going to be, would a message like, hi, we need to evacuate, we're leaving right away, that would take priority over, and that would be a priority message, am I correct? Oh, yeah, we even have, um, in, our, in our list of, pri and I don't know if James is on, it actually has a list in front of him, because I don't, but there's, it, there's, there's a list of the priority messages and you know we're okay. We're I don't know, James. You have you can, do you have that list in front of you? Can you can you dig that up while we're talking? <laughs> I do have it in front of me. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So James, um, now that we we came up with that subject, why don't you give us a list and, and, and kind of a you know a little bit of a meaning of what each of those um, mean as far as the actual priority messages that we can actually send. Okay. Um. I had a diff I had the other list up in front of me right now, which was the the list of all the ARRL messages, you know, all the way up to sixty nine or whatever. But I can get the other list for you as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can do a few of each, just you know, so we can compare and contrast for those who are not amateur radio inclined, which is pretty much what this show is dedicated to. 
um, and, you know, say, you know, this is what's routine, and here's a few of the routine general happy birthday messages, Merry Christmas messages, and here's our, you know, our priority messages that these have to go first. Uh, All right, well, the most common ones are, are of course, ARRL 47 and 67, which go with your message delivery, but then there's, uh, I think it's ARRL 56 for congratulations on appointments and stuff like that, uh, as well as uh, happy birthday, which is also very important. But just basically, uh, for precedence, your routine, that's 99.99% of all messages. They are handled last. Then there is a welfare message, which is either an inquiry to the health and welfare of an individual in the disaster area or the report of the health and welfare of an individual. Then there is a priority message. These are usually official messages not covered in the emergency category. And then, of course, the emergency category is uh, anything having to do with urgent life and death matters. Um, when in doubt, don't use that precedent, and that traffic will always be handled first and immediately. There is uh, special handling instructions, um, whereas most of them is uh, HXC, which reports the time and date of the delivery to the originating station, but then uh, becoming quite popular is Hotel X-Ray Golf, which they want to know for uh, if you've delivered it by mail or landline or a call, uh, and they want, would like a service message back from you. Oh, and, and, and those service messages, to, to, to break that down, is when we receive a radiogram, up, mm -hmm. in, up in our preamble, we'll have uh, the message number, we'll have the call sign of the originating station, mm -hmm. and one PZP. We'll have <laughs> the precedence, on, and a lot, of it is, a lot of what we do routine is HX Charlie, HX Golf, which pretty much means we want to know you actually delivered it and didn't deep six it someplace. And then usually oh, the date and time, it. yeah, date and Is time. Deep sixes and yeah, it? yeah, you know, HX Charlie, HX Golf. Um, you know, just let us know you delivered it. What happened? Did it go through? Did it not go through? We get a lot of of messages for N1 IQI. I know we do down here. Um, I know probably James does up there for N1 IQI. Just feel free to jump in. Loren. Yeah, Loren. Just Loren. Yeah, you can feel free to jump in here, and we get NX9K, and, and a lot of that is all HX Golf and HX Charlie. Oh. Um, but when we get oh, the okay. big, the, the big messages, and and we get the health and welfare messages, their priorities will be. Um, I for, uh, tell me what their priorities will be, James, on on the on the uh, the um, health and welfare messages. Say that again. The, the priorities, you know, like, like for the, the, health, the, the, the routine messages, we have HX Golf, we have HX uh, Charlie, we have whatever. The priority messages, I know that they have a special um, designator when you send a priority message. I'm looking at the handling instructions right now real quick, and I don't see a special handling instruction for priority messages. You know, and that's not handling, so like when you do the priority messages, I think it's, well, I know we put priority, I know we put P on it, but usually they'll put like M on it for medical or H and W for health and welfare, the thing, um, stuff like that. Um, let's see, oh, ooh, we got five minutes. Uh, I've never used one of those. Uh, uh, we, we used them, we used them in Hur Hurricane Maria, um, and, and we used them a, a few other places. Um, any, uh, we get, we, we got, we're cutting down on time here. So James, thanks for being here. Any final thoughts from the world of traffic handling? And you were an amazing guest. And by the way, you are our hey, first you, sir, live call in guest to this radio show. Yes. So we had a kind of a technical issue in the beginning, <laughs> but we <laughs> have that, bit. we have that worked out now. Um, and any final thoughts for the, for the people, you know, one that aren't in the ham radio that want to get into it, that are listening to this show. And saying hmm, maybe, and the ones sitting on the fence saying hmm, maybe, and the ones, especially the 150 we have here in Berkshire County, where they are pretty much non-active. Any any final thoughts for them? Anybody can do it. Everybody should do it. 
the AWRL is really pushing that Aries members uh, get really good at it and, and work together with traffic handling and, and traffic handlers. It, it's, it's fun. It's exciting. Um, I'm wondering if you have a pink card. Those are cool to have. I've, I've got an original pink card, and um, I collect QST magazines. I've got almost a 1,000 of them. I'm building a library here in the state of New Hampshire. Oh, so wow. if you know anybody who uh, throws away QST magazines or whatever, uh, <laughs> let me know about it, and I'll leave you with a, with a joke. Traffic handlers do it in mixed groups. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Thanks so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Okay, wait, friend. wait, 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 wait. You can't leave yet. Wait, you can't leave yet. Oh, no, I'm just making sure I say goodbye and thank you. Oh, we, we'll give you time for that. And, yes, I have a couple of boxes of QSTs at my house. Uh, okay, let's go to the trivia question. My trivia question for today was he's been with several groups, but is probably best known as a member of the Eagles. Who is he? The Walsh. Yeah? Think James? He's do you even, agree? He was even on the cover of QST magazine. Oh, and really? And he has radios on display that belong to him at the AWRL headquarters in Connecticut. Oh, that wow! That you can actually look at. Yep. WB 6 acu Joe Walsh of the Eagles. The, I didn't know they had radios of his on on display. Wow. Yep, he's, yeah. The last time we went, they, they 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 were there. I don't know if they changed it out or whatever, but yeah, they they have a little station set up. Of his uh, equipment that he's donated. Oh right. my goodness! Yeah, he's very active on the air. And 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 r real quick here, uh, for PCTV, we are actually simulcast now live, yeah. and we will be replayed Thursday at 8 p.m., Friday at 10:30 a.m., and Sunday at 3 a.m. I've also had a we all, I also have a personal appearance coming up, uh, <coughs> October 22nd. October 22nd. October 22nd at Patrick's Pub at 6 p.m. here in Pittsfield. I have a personal appearance. I'm going to address some people about talking about ham amateur radio. So not only do oh, I do nice. it on this radio station every Wednesday morning, but I also do it otherwhere, outside, everywhere. Uh, James, <laughs> wonderful guest. Thanks for being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. And, and we will, I will, I will talk to you uh, once we go off the air here, and I get things set, things taken care of. But um, you are a wonderful guest. Thanks for being here. Say hello to your wife for us. You're listening to Ham On on WTBR FM, and we'll say uh, goodbye to James, and we'll have a That's couple, great. we'll have <laughs> a, a co couple minutes here to do other stuff next week. Next week, we'll have the uh, Boston Norton National Weather Service in the studio. Awesome. And, and then October 30th will be the New England Paranormal Research. The Yay. Paranormal Investigators will be here. It was awesome. a great show. Jess, thank you as always. And uh, we hope to uh, be, we'll be back here next week. On behalf of myself, KD2JKV and Jesse and N1PZP. We like to say ham on, and we will talk to you next week. Bye, everybody.